crystalline. Wait, it's pronounced crystalline? Oh, I didn't know that. Hello everyone, welcome to Javelin Studio. I am Javelin. And today we're gonna start Crystalline, a visual novel by Pixel Fate. Uh, this visual novel right now is currently a demo on uh, Kickstarter and Pixel Fate has, well, they, this is their second project. Their first project is Ace Academy and the full version of this will be uh, released on the year end of 2017. And without further ado, let's start this demo and let's, let's see how it goes. Alright, we'll uh, enter the male characters. Male main characters first name, I'll go with my alias right here, Javelin. My last name, uh, I'll go with my surname, I'm you. The library is far more quiet than I would have expected at this time of night. The only sound is the gentle hum of the air conditioner. Well, they used the artwork from uh, Ace Academy, the library. They, the library they use is from Ace Academy, that is. Uh, okay. Whoa, that was too close. I blink my eyes wide open. Then I stay for a yawn and as I stretch to wake myself up. Focus. Finals are just around the corner so I can't afford to slack off. Glancing around me, I notice that I'm the only person left in the study cubicles. It is getting pretty late. I'll go back to the dorms as soon as I'm finished this last chapter. I flip through the book, only a few more pages to go. I can do this. Stealing my resolve, I refocus on my textbook. The words on the screen blur together as my eyelids grow heavy. I fight to keep my eyes open, but my lids continue to droop. I'll just rest them for a second. Something jerks me awake and my eyes blink open. A bright light illuminates the room, blinding me until all I can see is a stark whiteness. I throw my arm over my eyes to shield it from the light. After a few seconds pass, the light seems to dim, but it doesn't feel like the same fluorescent, fluorescent glow of the library bulbs. Carefully, I, un I unwind and bring my arm down, squinting at the pale blue sky. A mild breeze tussles my hair. Blades of grass tickle my neck as they wave in the wind. Where am I? I'm about to push myself up off the ground when something pops into view. A round blue ball with two dark eyes blinks at me. Poi? Okay. It bobs slightly, like pudding. When it notices my stare, it opens its small mouth and takes a dainty bite off my nose. Hey! The creature's bite doesn't sting, but I but feels like a cool splash of water. Before it can take another, I scramble to my feet. The creature tumbles off, off my head and falls to the ground. Once it lands, it shakes itself off with a gelatinous tremble, clearly unfazed. It hops onto my foot and opens its mouth again, but I quickly shake it off. It rolls off my foot into the, and into the dirt, then rides itself again. It pouts and continues to watch me but doesn't attempt another bite. What is that thing? Poi? Excuse me. It cocks its head as if wondering the same about me. Uh, that's unsettling. I take in the scattering of trees around me. The tall, their tall branches kiss the sky. There's a winding dark trail which weaves through the trees. As I follow it with my gaze, I see a smoke. I see smoke billowing out of thatched roofs of a village in the far distance. Where am I? The last thing I remember is study, studying in the library. That's it! I must have fallen asleep and I am now dreaming. Poi? I glance down at the blue creature. What? At my response, it leaps up. Poi, poi. Whoa! I scramble away from it and it lands back onto the ground with a soft thud. That thing can jump pretty high. I need to be careful. What's your deal? Boy. It leaps again, and I again retreat. Stop that! I dodge as it jumps, then I begin to run. To my surprise, the blob 
keeps pace with a series of nimble bounces. Boy, boy! Seriously, stay back. It musters up one long leap, and I turn around the corner of a sturdy tree to avoid it. I don't notice the other person until too late. We painfully collide, and I lose my balance before toppling over. <laughs> Fortunately, my hands catch myself, protecting my fall. When I open my eyes, I see a woman. Her eyes are scrunched shut, and her mouth is twisted in a grimace. Her long blonde hair is splayed around, out around her. The artwork is, well, pretty. Not that, well, Ace Academy, the artwork of Ace Academy is already pretty. Crystalline has improved a lot. As she lets out a small groan, she blinks open her eyes and fixes her gaze on me. Lex, Lex be a uh, Lex did the reality of or how normal people, how normally people would do. Uh, my, my bad. As I meet her gaze, my face, my face flushes, and I push my push myself to my feet. I, I'm so sorry. Are you hurt? I extend a hand. She hesitantly accepts it, and I help her up. Just a little sore, but otherwise I'm fine. Are you hurt? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry again. I should have paid more attention. Ella, I should have paid more attention to where, where I was going. It's partially my fault. I was distracted. Boy? The creature is right by my foot again. Are you serious? You're still here? The woman looks surprised. A pongo! Pongo? Jeez, oh that Pokemon last night is making me see things. References! Poke a man? Poi Poi? The Pongo bobs up and down by my foot and nudges me with its head. Aww, he's a cute one! He? Yeah, you can tell by the shape of his eyes. Oh. I think he wants you to hold him. Well, he is kind of cute. How can you tell? He's not being subtle about it. The pango hops onto my foot and looks up at me. Boy! Okay. I bend down as he bounces into my paw. He feels cool to, to, to the touch and surprisingly solid for being kind of gelatinous. Boy, boy. He chirps happily as he rolls over in my paw. Whoa! The woman leans in and uses a finger to gently tickle the pango. He chirrups again and shivers. Oh, his laugh is so adorable. She continues to tickle him as and he rolls over from laughing. <laughs> Oops. She stops tickling him and pats him on the head instead. He snuggles against her hand and sighs content. Boy. Using her other hand, she raises her gauntlet and seems to offer it to the punko. The pango stares at it, then turns his head away, and hops onto my shoulder before nestling against me. Boy! A pongo who refuses magic energy? Wait a minute, are you a mage? What the f- So... No? Okay, Lex. That's not a real completion. Level 1, 110 frost mage. Of course not, I'm a warrior. Uh, let's go with, well, of course not I'm a warrior, I prefer to hold a spear, so I guess that counts me as a warrior, or we should stick to reality, that's not a real occupation, uh, let's stick to reality, I'm a student, of magic, huh, no, a full-time post-secondary student. She seems confused. You keep saying such strange things. She holds up a gauntlet and her face pale light glows. It pulses rhythmically. There. As she holds it closer to me, it quickens until the pulse almost looks like one long pulse. She blinks in surprise. Wait, this heightened energy activity, it's you? 
She analyzes the ma magic swirly thing on the gauntlet. I don't see a discharger on you. So then, how is it possible for you to have such a high magical energy reading? Are you carrying crystals? Uh... What? Are crystals some kind of drugs? Well, technically... I came from a library. Like, I was studying in the library, so... No crystal of the sort. Not that I know of. Hmm. She looks me over again. Never mind. It doesn't look like you're carrying crystals. Or anything for that matter. I don't know what's going on right now, but I was studying in the library. I was in the library studying for finals and somehow I woke up here. So, are you from the Mage Academy? Okay, I think I doze off long enough. Time to wake up now. She blinks in confusion. You are awake. No, this is a dream. She frowns. I can assure you this is not a dream. Uh, well... Time for the pitch test. <laughs> Could this actually be real? She definitely seems real. And that fall certainly hurt. I... So red teacher's Lee words. Pinch myself and try to hide my wits. Okay. Well I don't think I would say this. If it's me, I either go with. I'm not convinced or I believe. Well, I believe you. Maybe she's right. Everything here feels too real. Even for a dream. I know. So, if this place isn't a dream, then where are we? We're in Meadow Hill. Meadow Hill? Where's that? It's a part of the Kingdom of Havenguard, of course. Havenguard? She looks at me like I'm crazy. It's the largest of the three kingdoms. Oh, so we're in Dynasty Warriors now? Actually, where are you from? Oh, I'm from New York. New York? Yeah, you know, part of the USA. U.S.A. USA? No, the United States of America. The United States of what? Never mind that for now. If you don't have any crystals, and you don't have a discharger, have you cast it recently? I shake my head. Then the amount of energy reading doesn't add up. She rests her chin in her hand as she thinks. A shiver runs through me as reality begins to set in. This really isn't a dream. Uh, any ideas? She shakes. Yeah, she shakes her head. Maybe the Mage Academy can provide answers. Mage Academy? Well, that's a start. Sounds good to me. How do I get there? Oh, it's in the center of Illumia. Uh, where? Illumia. You follow the path going north until you arrive at the crossroads. Then you head. Her voice trails off as she noticed my expression. I'm actually heading back there now. You can come along if you want. As I contemplate her offer, I looked her over again. Can I trust her? Her posture is naturally straight and gives her an air of authority. Plus, she did mention she was out here on some sort of official investigation. Plus, she seems friendly enough. Besides, if I don't go with her, then I'll be wandering around on my own. The chances of me finding this mage academy alone without running into any unsavory people are not promising. I can't risk that. I need to find a way back home. I know. Thanks. I'm driving you, by the way. I'm Liana. Liana Dawn. Nice to meet you. I hold on my hand for her to shake, but she just stares at me. After keeping my hand out for a few seconds, I, be I begin to feel awkward. Her expression changes to curiosity as she gingerly takes my hand. I grin broadly as I shake her hand firmly. She's a bit startled, but when our gaze meets, she matches my smile. It's nice to meet you too. I look at her questioningly as sh she continues to shake my hand. Well, wait, did I mention the animation? It's pretty good. Well, I don't know whether I want to continue my studies as an animator or not, but 
but I have my options. Either to be a programmer or an animator, I don't know. I'm gonna start college too. <laughs> and I'm in the world, in the fantasy world. She slips her hand away and blushes. Shall we get going then? Ready when you are. Leanna nods and brings us and brings us back onto the path. Then she walks in the direction of the village. The punk girl follows us, staying a step behind. We travel for quite some time together. It's been pretty silent. I wonder if I should say something. Well, we are in a foreign land, so we don't know about most of the things here. So, I don't have anything pressing to say. Well, game-wise, choose choose the last thing to further progress the story. But let's gonna let's go over the details. Let's ask about the pango. I glance behind us again, just as expected. The pango hops along. So, the pango still following us. Liana glances back and greets. That's not too surprising. Uh, why not? Pongos are attracted to magical energy. That's why it was so strange that it showed no interest in my manipulator. It's still following us, though. It's following you. <laughs> my readings showed you're full of magical energy. As far as the Pongo is concerned, you're a buffet. So, she's, she's gonna eat me? But I don't think so. Well, uh, it... Did bite my nose. Huh. As I think over what Liana said, I look at the pango one more time. This time he looks right back at me and his eyes crinkle as he splits into a huge grin. Boy, boy. Uh -huh. He leads up into the air and reaches the height of my waist. Whoa! Boy. He jumps high again. Liana giggles. I think he's tired of hopping. <laughs> well, the humane ways to carry him, I guess. I guess it can be kind of hard to keep up when you're so much smaller than us. I hold my hands and the pango hops right into my palm. But he doesn't stop there. Before I can react, he hops onto my shoulder and jumps again to land on top of my head. I feel a cool wiggle in my hair. Liana giggles again. Uh, what? What's he doing? <laughs> Nothing. He's just so happy. She reaches out a finger to stroke the pango, who chirps contentedly. Liana's smile broadens. Then she clears her throat as she tries to take on a more serious expression. Her steps quicken as she resumes walking. And uh, let's ask about what brought her here. Okay. So, not that I'm complaining, but what exactly were you doing in the field? The field? Where you found me? Oh, there have been rumors of high energy readings around Meadow Hill, so I was sent to investigate. I had already checked out the surrounding area, and there'd been no clear source for all that excess energy until today. When you met me, she not. I hadn't been in the field for very long before you found me, though. Hmm. You might be a byproduct of whatever created the energy spike in the first place. What do you think that was? I'm not sure. I haven't seen readings of that level before. The Mage Academy should be able to help explain. I wonder what it takes to become a mage. So, besides magic, what else does the Mage Academy teach? Oh, all the basics. How to use a manipulator, how to control your energy, the many usages and differences between crystals and spears. Okay. Got it. Maybe you'll bring us back to the previous option. Let's learn, or we can learn about crystal energies and spheres, which we will do that. What exactly is this crystal stuff you keep mentioning? You mean the difference between crystals and crystal spheres? Well, when we refer to crystals, we mean the raw crystals, whereas crystal spheres are the usable refined state. Uh, that's helpful, but I meant crystals in general. 
she stares at me and narrows her eyes as if trying to judge if I'm serious. It's the power source for, well, everything. I look blankly at her. You don't use crystals where you come from? Uh, no. Yeah, we... We don't, but we have other stuff. Her mouth falls. Her mouth falls open, and she looks at me in bewilderment. With no crystals? What else do you use to power things? Yeah, that's a lot. Lots of stuff. <laughs> like I said, I count off on my fingers. The sun, water, wind, nuclear fission, fossil fuels like coal or oil. Her eyes widen with each item I list. She's about to speak, but I'm not finished. Geothermal, waves, tidal, hydrogen. Okay, okay. She sh shakes her head incredulously. I get it. You have your own methods of energy. Many, many methods. Diana's eyes sparkle as she falls into a pensive silence. A small smile plays at her lips while she considers what I've said. I might have overwhelmed her a little, but she actually seems interested in all of methods of harnessing energy. Okay, Lex asked about the last thing, about her gauntlet. Without seeming too suspicious, I tried to get a better look at her gauntlet. What was that thing? That, what was that thing she was doing it, doing with it earlier? Liana notices my. Uh, Liana notices me. Notices me staring and shifts uncomfortably. Are you okay? Yeah, I was just curious about your gauntlet. Oh, my manipulator. Uh, sure. All mages have a manipulator. It's how we use energy to interact with the elements around us. Wait, you mean you can cast spells? I suppose that's one way to phrase it. Whoa, can you show me something cool? Um, like what? Tornado, power, anything. Cast magic missiles. Mm. How about a tornado? Can you summon a tornado? She laughs. Not exactly. We can manipulate elements, but not to that extent. Uh oh. I tried to hide the disappointment from my voice. I listened for the sounds of wildlife as you continued walking. I can hear the usual song of birds and the faint bush of wings flapping in the air. Occasionally, there's a rustle amid the trees. And I even swat at the bugs buzzing around my eyes. It all feels very familiar, reminding me of home. Liana clears her throat. So, you're from Usa? U.S.A. But yeah. Which kingdom is that in? Uh... How should I phrase this? In the kingdom of North America. She frowns and scratches her neck. Where she is touching a head right now. I'm not sure. I'm a little ashamed to say I'm not familiar with that place. Where is it? On... Earth. Earth? Okay, time to take a different approach. Let me see if I can explain. Alright, tell me, where are we right now? In Meadow Hill. And where is that? In the Kingdom of Havengard. And where is Havengard? In the land of Asaria. And what is that a part of? Terra, of course. Okay, so Terra is my Earth. She pauses as my words sink in, then she gasps. Wait, are you not from Terra? From... From what I've heard so far, I'm not. She looks concerned. How did you get here? That's what I'm hoping the major academy can tell me, because how the hell should I know? Right, but I mean, how did you come to Meadow Hill specifically? Do you remember anything before you were in the field? I was in the library, yeah. I think back, I was studying in the library, and I'd been extra tired because that's the same day I have my evening class. And I still remember everything about me and my past. And my past. Yeah. Hmm. Well, at least we know you don't have amnesia. I know. She laughs back into silence, looking thoughtful. I have a lot to think about myself. My head is swimming with everything I've learned so far. Although there are some similarities between Terra and Earth, I've only scratched the surface on all of the differences. I really hope the Mage Academy can help explain what's going, what is going on, and more importantly, how I can get back home. Oh. Well, 
I'm getting the feeling of Final Fantasy X or up right now. Because Final Fantasy X is about someone trying to get home. Basically it's like that. The pungo flips in front of my eyes and I carefully scoop him back in, into place on my head. Whoa, what happened there? Did you slip? Boy, boy. Is it my imagination or did I poi poi sound a little sheepish? Liana looks over and grins. You were trying to get a good look at our friend here, weren't you? I feel movement on my head as I assume the pango nods. Looks like someone got a little adventurous and lost his footing. Poi. I let out the chuckle as Liana giggles. Once the pango is secured, we continue walking. The sun dips in the sky and bathes the tips of trees in a soft glow. My feet ache in protest with each step I take and my legs are tight from all the walking. Finally, we came upon the perimeter of the village. Liana grins as she leads me through the gates. Here we are! Meadow Hill Village! I take the time to catch my breath and discreetly rest my burning muscles. Liana hardly seems affected by the long trek. We're finally here. How was this close? Yeah, uh, let's be... Let's be polite right here. I pull my arms into a stretch. Phew, that was quite the journey. Liana masked mask a chuckle. A journey? I know. This time she can't quite hold back her laugh. Let's continue. We can rest at the inn tonight. As she resumes walking, I ignore my screaming legs and follow her. The village is still bustling with people even at this time of day. I suppose they're getting in their last they're getting in their last errands before nightfall. For the most part, everyone seems to focus on their own tasks. They barely glance at Leanna, but when when they gaze but when their gazes are drawn to me, they don't look away. In fact, their steps slow as they crane their necks as we pass. Now I know how an animal feels at the zoo. Diana overhears, overhears my muttering and watches the people around us. It's your clothes. They're very peculiar. What I'm wearing is normal for where I came from. Even though the stairs are direct, directed at me, Liana seems equally uncomfortable. Okay, new plan. Let's stop by the shops before they close. We don't need to draw attention to ourselves. I, insti I instinctively pat my back pocket where I keep my wallet. I doubt they'll accept cards here, or dollars. I don't have any money. That's okay. I'll take care of it. Th I, that's really generous of you. I like a girl who's independent. Don't make a big deal out of it. Well... She offered to help. Oh, at least we should thank her. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's understandable given your circumstances. I'll pay you back once I can. Liana smiles and nods. Liana changes direction and leads me towards an adjacent street. There are rows of quaint shops lining both sides of the road. I read the signs as we walk by. I words Apothecary, Blackstone Forge, Dragon Scale Armory. Huh. What is it? I was just thinking how convenient that it is that everything's in English here. English? I should have expected the question based on how our previous conversations have gone, but I'm still a little taken aback. Excuse me. It's what we're speaking now. We're speaking common. What? Liana pauses in front of the a shop and peers inside. Satisfied, she motions for me to follow. Never mind. Come on in. We're here. I step into the shop, and the first thing I notice is the whole overpoweringly musty smell of leather. It's not surprising considering the walls are lined with different types of leatherware. A small elderly man emerges, emerges from the back. A pair of round glasses sits on his nose as an apron hangs around his neck. Welcome. Please, take a look around. 
Well, they don't use Seho Lens like it, they do in Ace Academy, but okay. His mouth falters when he notices me. Liana clears her throat. We're looking for a new wardrobe for my friend here. Yes, yes, of course. The shopkeeper blinks back to reality and resumes his pitch. Well, you've come to the right place. We tan our hides and stitch the pieces ourselves. You won't find any finer quality than here. Liana smiles politely and strolls towards the selections. I check out two seemingly identical leather vests, both of which are marked at different prices. I really can't see a difference between the two. Maybe they're both different stats. Hey Liana, she turns around. Which of which one of these will increase my defense, strength, dexterity, intelligence, focus? Well, since this is a demo, I doubt any of these will affect anything in the further storyline. Well, in my opinion, maybe. Uh, the full version would somehow alter the some of the the dialogues in the future start in the future plot or whatever. So for my preference, I prefer dexterity. Dexterity. Um, I suppose leather armor will allow for greater range of motion while still providing decent protection. That's the benefit of the armor type. I mean, dexterity. She blinks. Okay, that's sl slight glitch lag. So, none of these raise any stats. Diana gives me a weird look. Do your clothes where you come from raise stats? Only if you consider cool points to be a stat. Which I agree. She looks just as confused as before. Never mind. She smiles as we continue perusing. One by one, Leanna and I pick out my new outfit. Once all the pieces have been chosen, she goes to haggle with the shopkeeper. I tune out the discussion and watch the people passing by. The clothing are simple in design, meant to be more functional than aesthetic. To my surprise, everybody walks around armed. This village doesn't seem dangerous, but looks can be deceiving. Why don't you get changed now? There's a space in the back to give you some privacy. I nod and take the clothes from her. Once I've ensured privacy, I quickly get changed. Luckily, these clothes have, have pockets and I can just transfer everything over. I pawn my wallet, deck of cards, and loose change. Next is my, is my phone. I try to turn it on just to see if it will work. But it doesn't react. The battery must be dead. Oh, you're starting at the library with a dead phone. Without a power bank. Or whatever. Well, unless while you're transferring into Terra, maybe the and the electricity doesn't apply here and they vanish or drain or whatever. Or either that. I was in the library with a dead phone, without a power bank, or a wall charger, or in a sense, like that, etc. I don't know, words. I get the feeling that they don't have any wall chargers here. <laughs> Shrugging it off, I slip my phone into my pocket too. When I emerge, Liana gives me a once over. How do I look? She grins and nods in satisfaction. Wow, look at you, just like a native. This look suits you. I match her green. Thanks. Let's go find the inn now. She heads out of the shop and I follow her. Actually, maybe we can stop by the armory? She pauses and looks curiously at me. Armory? You want to get a weapon? Her question is careful, cautious. The goal is to blend in, right? It's weird that a person wearing leather armor is traveling unarmed. I look like a hostage or something. Hmm, you do have a point. Plus, it could come in handy. Why do I not like the sound of that? Do you know how to use a weapon? Again, although her voice holds no hostility, I can sense her caution. I practice Kendo competitively. Kendo Crush reference. But, I mean, but he's from, 
the main characters from the USA. And it has a candle club? I don't know about that. I thought candle clubs are on, they don't only have it in Japan. Or maybe the main character is from USA, he studied in Japan. Whatever, let's move on. She blinks. It's a type of sword fighter where I came come from. I see. Liana falls silent as she gazes out into the street. After an extended pause, she nods. We head to the forge where rows of blades ranging from long swords to short daggers hang from the wall. Well, they also have shields, guns, and a suit of armor. I assume these are crystals. Uh, and I was hoping they have spears and bows or staffs. I prefer to use a spear for my preference. Unlike the previous shopkeeper, the metalsmith ignores us as he pounds out a red hot blade. Sparks jump from the clanging metal, reminding me of fireflies. Leanna lets me browse the swords, I reach for one that catches my eye. As I gently remove it from the shelf and miscalculate it, its weight and drop it. Well, I was hoping I could get a spear or javelin as my alias. <laughs> Uh, pole arms. I prefer pole arms. If that's what I'm saying is correct. Well, well, I sure hope they can. You guys can. Uh, Pixel, the Pixel Fate team is, uh, is watching this. If you are watching this, Pixel Fate, uh, I really hope that you apply that about the different weapon selection, like. Well, sword, like spears was, in a sense, for some people who prefer crossbows or, or staffs. Uh, for me, I prefer to, to have a pole like a javelin, <laughs> or spears or lances, pole arms. Well, okay, let's move on. The steel scratches the ground with a sharp screech. The metalsmith pause, pauses in his work to lower a warning. Liana looks on in shock. Careful! I quickly write the sword back up and grip it tightly. Liana now watches me with intrigue. Is this the first time you've held a sword? Well, since I'm from the Candle Club, practice once. Nothing beyond wooden swords. Technically, it's, it is a wooden sword. I take a practice swing and fumble the sword. Luckily, I tighten my grip and get it under control. Liana looks uneasy. Lag. I swing again and the movement flows naturally. This, as the sword cuts through the air with a sharp twing, I can't help but admire how smooth it slices. This is high quality craftsmanship. Let's go with this one. As before, Liana discusses with the shopkeeper. When she returns, I strap the sword to my belt. We make one more stop to gather supplies for our travel. By the time we are finished, the sun has set and darkness blankets the sky. The town is aglow with soft lights glint, soft lights glint from within houses and the lampposts, lampposts on the streets. Blah. My wordings. As we pass by a lamppost, I peek inside and see a small crystal shining brilliantly. Using the lights to guide us, we find the inn. I take a seat at one of the crew tables while Liana talks to the innkeeper behind the bar. There are a scattering of other patrons, mostly men who sit alone, nursing a tankard of what I assume to be ale. I stay for a yawn. Now that I have a chance to sit down, I feel the full weight of my fatigue. Luckily, Liana returns and hands me a key. This is your room for the night. It's right next to mine. Thanks. She nods. They should be coming out with our dinner soon. Then we should get to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow. My stomach grumbles in anticipation. Sorry. Liana smiles as she as she ah, as she sits in the empty stool next to mine. Our meals arrive and I stare 
at the bowl before me. It's goopy, thick stew, and looks about as appetizing as dog food, but it smells pretty good. Uh, what is this? It's stew. Uh, what kind of stew? Rabbit. What? Hmm. A brief image of a cute fl fluffy bunny flashes across my eyes. No! Oh my god. Why? Is something wrong? Yes, there's something wrong. I only eat non-GMO, all natural, vegan, certified, gluten-free, 100% whole grain, no, no trans fat, grass fat, no preservative, organic pasture meals. <sighs> well, I'm not gonna... Well, I assume it's gonna... What's gonna come out of this is... I don't know. Meat is murder. Well, I... Nope, all good. Is there an almost still? Hmm. Is there an almost still? Uh, is rabbit a common meat around here? Mm hmm. They're abundant and easy to trap. What about beef? Her eyes widen. You've eaten beef? Of course. That's a luxury meat here. Seriously? Does that mean you've never have had beef before? She sh shifts in her seat and stares at the bowl. You should eat your stew before it gets cold. I take a tentative bite of my stew. How is it? Well... Since it's rabbit... Different, adequate... Yeah, it keeps me full. That's all I need. Liana nods. I finish eating and Liana cleans her bowl. Then the two of us heads upstairs. You know what? You know what, maybe I've heard that some some people do eat rabbit meat, so yeah. She pauses in front of her room and I stop in front of mine. Good night. Good night! I'm about to enter my room when I hear a small voice. Holly? Looking down, I see the pango back at my feet. Now that I think about it, ever since we entered the village, he's been awfully silent. Have you been following us this whole time or did you lose us and fight us again? The pango blinks twice and bounces. Boy boy! Pangos aren't exactly welcomed everywhere. Uh, why is that? Well, they absorb the energy around them, including crystals which are used to light lampposts or other similar items. Ah, uh, I can see how that would be bad. I think this guy knew to stay out of sight once we came in here. What if someone sees him here? As long as he doesn't stray too close to a crystal, he'll be fine. People only make a fuss when it looks like their crystal might be drained. Got it. She reaches towards the pango. Do you want to sleep with me tonight? Poi! The pango snuggles against my leg. Liana sighs. I thought as much. She opens her door and flash flashes me one last smile. Sleep well. She disappears into her room. I open it. My door and step through. The pango perks up. Boy, boy. Uh, we'll let him in. I step away from the door and the pango hops in. As I close the door behind him, he continues to hop around the room, as if inspecting it. Yawning widely, I collapse onto the bed. The pango continues to circle the room. Are you looking for a good place to sleep? Boy. He suddenly leaps up and lands on my bed. Then he bounces to my foot, off the bed, and wiggles himself to it. Uh, Ella, words. Then he bounces to the foot of the bed and wiggles himself. A cozy nest by creating a small crater on the top of the blanket. I can't help but grin at the little guy. Good night, Pango. Boy, boy. I roll over in bed, and it's not long before I'm fast asleep. Knock on my door draws me awake. Okay, this this is probably be the second day. So I'm gonna stop here. Whenever one day pass in the game counts for one episode for my video. So I assume this will be the second day. Uh then I'll stop here. Anyway th guys, thank you for watching Javelin Studios. I'm Javelin and I'll see you in the next episode. Good night guys. Have a great day.